Yes, you will hand us a copy of your script, but we get that as you are about to start doing the presentation. So effectively, I see, or oh, Mr. Ellington, or Mr. Morton, or whoever the markers are, there will be two teachers marking each one. I see them exactly the same as what we see this. We just see it cold. Okay? But you see you from about there across, so we're going to do it to the left. Okay. Right, -o. now remember please in this presentation we'll need to make sure obviously that you can see this board properly and also that you are quiet. If you don't feel you can, go and sit outside, watch the video later. We need your focus for this. Okay, let's begin now and I'll do it my own timekeeping if you wish. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my top presentation today is titled Sticks and stones will break my bones, but labels will never hurt me. Now, this is not a knowledge issue. It's a title that I was inspired to use by the real life experience that I saw, a real life situation that I saw on a cartoon. And here we have my real life situation, a painter painting a whole series of smokestacks green. That might be a sort of meaningless um, idea or pastime. But then again, I think it was trying to tell us something about how we might be labelling things. And if he's going to call these smokestacks green smokestacks, are we in some way intended to think differently about the smokestacks now because they're green? It's an example of a label that we might use. So the knowledge issue that I have come up with from that real life experience is this one. How does the use of labels to describe people and events affect how we perceive them? The use of labels. And in this particular case, I'm looking at the use of the word or term or colour even green to describe a particular smokestack. And we ask the question, is the painting of the polluted smokestacks green intended to influence how we perceive them? And green is an example of the labels that I'm talking about. Okay. Well, there are many labels that we use in our daily life. You can see many of them on screen there right now. So I'd like you to cast your eyes over those labels and ask yourself, how are they generally used? Um, are they typically value-free? Are they usually intended to represent something in particular, a concept, or an idea, or a person? What is it about them that makes them a label, a category? Now, obviously, as we look through these, I won't have time to look at all of them, I'll look at some in detail, but they all together um, make up, of course, our use of language. A language mechanism by which we are attempting to get across an idea or even influence or manipulate an idea. Generally speaking, many of those terms can be used in an emotional context. So we look at our emotions for this. Things like illegals up here. Things like terrorists up here. Things like alarmists up here. Um, the example that I've used is, is, is clearly one of sense perception, the painting of, a, of the smokestacks green. And of course, all these are intended to influence how we reason about an issue. And so the talk ways of knowing are very relevant to the idea of labels. How is this significant to my experience? Where do I come from in this? How do I stand in this? Well, of all these labels, I've certainly been um, fortunate enough at least to be called, say, a nerd to start with. Anyone who works at the Academy for Science, Maths and Technology you probably had to work with that label to some degree. I don't know what it means. Yeah. Not, not, not in your um, earshot anyway, Mr. Gish. Um, Skeptic, I am a member of the Australian Skeptic Society and the way people use the word skeptic is extremely emotionally laden. Um, and, you know, I, I remember vividly um, being at an acupuncturist just to see if they worked. And, uh, although I did have something wrong with me. And he said, um, he knew for some reason I was in the skeptics and he said, oh, so you don't believe in anything. And I thought, well, but how do you get that from what I am? So it impacts, that word, that label impacts me quite strongly. I've been called narrow-minded because I believe in a scientific worldview. There's all sorts of issues around that. So these are some of the ways in which it's relevant to me. But what I'd like to do is look at, in the time I have, just two of these. I'd like to look at the idea of green. That was my real life experience. 
and the one skip, and the skip. Because again, they're, they're both relevant to me. So, let me ask the question, what does it mean, green, in this label? What do we think of when we see the word green, label green? Well, there are many ways we can think of it. We might think of it in a political sense, green party. We might think of it in terms of recycling and those technologies which we think are, are green. We might consider it a harmonious um, nurturing type of um, uh, system or indeed in this example here, a nurturing, caring aspect of taking care of the world, whatever the impact of green might be. There are some of the labels associated with green. In fact, I'm looking here at positive images of what it means to be green. So let's ask ourselves the question, what positive terms and characteristics might be associated with being green? What images do we think of when we think of green? And just pulling some out of the literature, we can see um, words like responsible, caring, understanding, globally focused, sustainable, harmonious, nurturing. They're all terms that are generally associated in a positive aspect with being green. What's always interesting, the first thing that struck me when I was looking at all this was how people use this in selling products. Take, for example, the RAV diesel, RAV4 diesel car. Look here at the colour of this thing. The whole thing is green. The car nature wants to own is all being portrayed as green. Even without telling you why, automatically we have that association. So that's a significant one for the RAV4. Here we have a green choice, environmentally friendlier concentrated pumping, cleaning liquid. <laughs> now what is it about that that makes it green? Why it's the ditch of the turtle perhaps? I don't know. But certainly we have a very strong green influence in advertising and we're using that in a positive way. And by buying green products we see ourselves as being all of those things that we associate with the label green in a positive aspect. Okay? So there's the same terms as before. And how do we use this and influence the perception of others, apart from advertising? A good example that we might use, again another real life example we'll use, is Al Gore, Nobel Prize, Peace Prize winner, the Nobel Environmental Warrior, Green Warrior. We see Al Gore as something larger than life, we see him as a green warrior. And interestingly, of course, what we have here is another interesting label, Warrior. How do we use that label in the context of green warrior? Well, I've heard that somewhere before, of course. And who can knock it? Steve Irwin. Um, positive connotations of this are significant. But let's have a look. What negative terms or characteristics might we associate with being green? What ways can we see the term green as less than favourable? Well, trees, tree hope. Derogatory terms, probably label. Could be positive, could be negative, I suppose, depending on what you are. Idealist, is that positive or negative? Generally used in a negative sense. Lazy, parasite, parasitic, anti-progress. These are terms as well that we might think of as a negative aspect of the green. And how might we use these concepts to influence the beliefs of others? So is Al Gore a noble environmental warrior, or is he the money-grabbing opportunistic politician? Is he making a green buck? Is he trying to stop that? Is he, is he, as he has so often said, against the American way of progress and development? Is he someone who promotes fear? And there's another good label right here from this instance here. Radical. Radical environmentalism. What does it mean to be a radical? The Greek definition is to the root, to the base. But we don't use that in our context anymore. Radical now means something quite, quite strong and usually very negative. Um, we might think of uh, negative aspects of green and the use of negative aspects of green in political situations. It's certainly a strong divide in America between conservative and liberal. Maybe we're talking about packaging environmentally as Lism as communism. This is a, as a t-shirt that's actually sold that I, I, I've seen. Um, maybe we're looking at the notion here of Greenpeace being unpopular, Greenpeace being unpopular because it seemed to affect jobs, anti-progress, that type of thing. And we're putting trees above people 